So can we load the slides, please? Yes. Uh, so that's the theme of uh, my talk. Um, let me see. So I like to really uh, thank for the opportunity for me to present the case uh, in this uh, uh, meeting, and uh, we will uh, highlight. Um, the uh, emphasis uh, in KAIST uh, as a research university. And uh, then I also present uh, particular uh, challenges and opportunities uh, presented for KAIST, followed by introduction. So many people in this room, I think you are here because you do care for reputation and ranking. And maybe it's your desire to be one of the top uh, universities worldwide. Uh, so uh, I think my talk will be relevant uh, to your interest. So you heard from uh, previous speakers uh, what is important to be one of the top universities. I think it has a lot to do with the, the renowned faculty and the good research programs good education programs, and good resource, a solid resource, uh, which uh, will support uh, excellent uh, support by staff, for instance, and the ethical standards uh, in terms of a social responsibility, quality of students, scholarly impact, technological innovation, and social impact. I emphasize the social impact. And uh, especially in science and technology area, it will be technology transfer, which all uh, will depend on uh, strategic uh, goals and the implementation. So again, um, another underlining in terms of uh, shared culture and the values, human resource, financial resource, and the multi-year uh, multi goal, a long-term or uh, mid-term uh, goals and strategies. So what are the foundations uh, for outstanding university? Again, excellence in education and research. Really, high standards for academic achievement and excellence encouraging out-of-box questions, uh, whether you are a student or faculty. I think ethical standards, uh, we have seen many cases. They publish paper in science and the nature. Turns out to be the wrong case, uh, especially with the faked data and so on. We don't want to have such a thing uh, in uh, research universities. So I think high ethics is very, very important. High respect for good achievements by faculty, students, and staff. And uh, also how to reward uh, outstanding uh, contributions. And then also building competitive edges uh, for students, the faculty, and the staff as well. So we talked about the leapfrogging. Uh, Kaist, um, is uh, 43 years old. It started from scratch, but how did it build excellence uh, to be at uh, where it is now? There was uh, the culture of uh, promoting excellence and uh, shared values, which also depended on uh, recruiting excellent faculty members, staff members, and students. Uh, in fact, uh, admission to KAIST is very, very um, high. Uh, it receives students from uh, talented uh, science uh, high schools. And then if they come from ordinary high schools, uh, strongly depend on uh, recommendation of principals. And uh, we emphasize uh, efficient administration. And then uh, more emphasis on globalization. We talked about English education and the student exchange. I will elaborate uh, later on. So what happened? Uh, can we get back? Uh, yes, thank you. And uh, also resource, although KAIST is well funded by government, it's not enough. So we are doing uh, active uh, fundraising. 
Uh, recently, we had a major fundraising of uh, actually donation of an individual who had a strong trust in heist and uh, gave $20 million, which was uh, national news. I started myself in uh, 2013, uh, more than uh, 14 months ago. And in my inauguration speech, I put the emphasis on what KAIST should aim for by uh, highlighting this, uh, the spelling of KAIST, K-A-I-S-T. So K meaning knowledge creation, A, advancement, uh, you don't get satisfaction where you are. We try to leapfrog. And then uh, ethics, uh, and uh, among other things, uh, integrity. And the sustainability is very important. Uh, when you do research, uh, sustained research will uh, build excellence and depth. Uh, and then public trust. Uh, trust uh, uh, among faculty members, uh, faculty, between faculty and the student, staff, and so on. So I, I think trust, you will see, it, it is a very important element. So what challenges and opportunities we have at KAIST? Uh, you heard that, uh, yes, KAIST ranks rather high. Um, the overall ranking was uh, 56. In science and engineering was the 25th. And then uh, among uh, universities uh, less than 50 years old was uh, ranked third. In terms of a QF's uh, ranking, it's about the same, uh, 60th. And then uh, some departments, uh, like uh, material science and engineering, ranked uh, number 16 in the world. Uh, chemistry ranked number 17. Mechanical engineering, 21, etc. So we have been doing uh, pretty well. If you are interested in uh, statistics of KAIST, we have about 11,000 students. We have about 48,000 graduates. Uh, among 11,000 students, we have about 4,500 undergraduate students and 6,500 graduate students. Uh, mainly, it's a graduate school. We do have um, three different campuses. Uh, main campus at the Daejeon, one hour south of Seoul. And then Munji is a neighboring campus. Actually, this is a case of a, a merger. Uh, there was a information communication university. Five years ago, it got merged to KAIST. And we have a Seoul campus, uh, a school of uh, business in Seoul. Annual budget is about $700 million. It's mainly uh, derived from faculty research uh, contract. Among that, about 25% only is from government, although it's a government-supported institution. So traditionally, people emphasized the individual research. But as you know, we are moving to collaborative research and uh, also encourage open innovation in our teaching and research and also communication, uh, the community service as well. In terms of a long-term, mid-term uh, development plan, we put uh, emphasis on our mission, science and technology for humanity. So that's an uh, important mission for KAIST. Again, we emphasize humanity because uh, what we do is uh, for well-being of uh, humankind. Um, so that's why, actually, when you talk to parents, they say, please teach more philosophy, more history to our students, although we are science and technology strong research university. Uh, in terms of strategy, we encourage interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary research and education and also strong emphasis on globalization. Uh, we try to increase the number of foreign faculty members as well as uh, international students. And uh, we encourage students to come from abroad because we guarantee that uh, they will be able to uh, finish their degrees within time uh, with a sufficient supply of uh, courses. We are not 100% English education yet, but uh, there's a uh, sufficient number of courses taught in English so that the students can take any course they want. I give you one example of a 
interdisciplinary research. Um, this is uh, the interdisciplinary research institute called the KAIST Institute. We emphasis is on uh, biotechnology, uh, also information technology, complex systems, nanotechnology, as well as optical technology, and then uh, CO2 mitigation uh, research. It provides open space for open innovation. Uh, what you see on the bottom picture is uh, laboratory space totally open. There's no wall. Length is uh, 70 meters. Um, and uh, so students can walk in and out freely and interact with the uh, uh, professors and other students. Uh, it promotes also ethics because they do share equipment and so on. In terms of education, we encourage uh, discussion-based education. So we prepare all the course materials on the web page and the students come just for discussion. There's no teaching in class. Uh, it turns out that the student can learn much better in depth, and their performance compared to traditional instruction has been proven to be much better. So we are trying to expand uh, more and more uh, into this direction. Uh, in terms of uh, the uh, research collaboration, we work with uh, Aramco, which is the world's largest oil producing company in Saudi Arabia, to address the CO2 mitigation issues. So we do have a Aramco Kais Research Center on campus, and we address environmental issues, energy issues, water issues, and sustainability issues. Uh, we provide opportunity for undergraduate students to get engaged in research, and uh, they come up with the patterns and uh, even publish papers in Nature and Science. Recently, we also promote uh, startup activities among students by teaching them entrepreneurship. We have about 6,000 square feet open space, uh, free, free access for students. They can come anytime, and then it's an idea factory, idea sandbox so that they can uh, exercise their imagination, creativity, and then uh, come up with a business plan even. Uh, so we, we do that at KAIST. So th this is encouraging uh, startup activities, and uh, we have uh, the Endron project. If uh, technology is mature enough, uh, they can launch their business in Silicon Valley even. So, and uh, we mentor them, coach them, provide the funding uh, for doing such things. Uh, because this is uh, important for the nation as well, and the region. And the globalization I emphasized uh, earlier, so we are quite serious about globalization. And um, we want to make a KAIST as a global hub uh, for science and technology. We hold the annual meeting for university uh, presidents uh, among uh, many uh, research universities, and I do have uh, advisory council coming from all over the con uh, uh, globe. So in conclusion, uh, what uh, we value at KAIST is uh, passion for science and technology, and then uh, also culture, and then we try to encourage them to be a trusted partner, and then uh, also teach them, coach them, also um, set a goal for uh, finding high-value problems and solving them uh, to benefit the humankind uh, worldwide. So KAIST is, uh, again, uh, in summary, trying to become a world-leading uh, research university in science and technology. We emphasize the uh, importance of graduates. I think they are the best technology transfer for any university. They are living technology in that sense. Uh, and we try to be best in many fields of uh, uh, intellectual endeavors. And we also uh, cooperate globally for research collaboration and education uh, collaboration. We do have many joint degree programs. We try to attract uh, many talents, uh, both the faculty and the students. So KAIST is paving the way for a worthwhile future uh, for create, with the creativity and challenge. I think that's the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention.
for that. Um, we have got some time to take some questions. Uh, an incredible story. Um, so open for questions. Again, the same standing up, turning your back to us, facing the camera, asking your question. So can we take some questions? Yeah, in the middle there. Thanks. Uh, hello, uh, my name is George Lin uh, from National uh, Changcheng University, Taiwan. Uh, during the past 10 years, I see a tremendous growth uh, in the education, higher education system in Korea. Uh, I understand your, your budget is 10 times as much as we, we have in Taiwan. But uh, just one key question is, uh, I, I guess you have to invite a lot of international scholars from overseas. And they obviously speak different language. They don't speak Korean. And when they arrive in Korea, how do you uh, help them go through with the, the culture shock you know, in Korea? You know? You know, I, I, I don't know how much percentage of faculty are invited from overseas you know, in, on your, in your campus. Can you uh, help us understand how you handle the culture shock for faculty members invited from overseas? Yes, so the question was how to uh, mitigate uh, culture shock, uh, especially for uh, foreign faculty members as well as students at KAIST. Uh, indeed, um, it is a challenge. Um, and uh, in order to increase number of uh, international faculty members as well as students, we have to make sure that uh, those already uh, at KAIST uh, will feel uh, comfortable and uh, then uh, do well. Uh, so we have an uh, organization uh, which put great effort uh, in helping uh, new faculty members and the new students. And uh, also recently, uh, my wife, um, who has some uh, experience in the United States, so she created what is called the Chi Plus. This is a new organization uh, organized by faculty spouses, and they provide uh, uh, much help to international visitors and the new faculty members and the students. Uh, so they hold the weekly coffee hours uh, for them to come and uh, provide uh, as much help as possible. And we found out that there was not enough uh, documentation in English for foreign visitors thus far. So as of last year, we created a new document for uh, foreigners uh, for uh, their use in the apartment and on campus. Uh, also, for communication, there has been uh, many communications in uh, Korean, but we are making sure that we create two columns, one in Korean and one in English, so that the foreign faculty members can find out what's going on. And recently, uh, some of the foreign faculty members created a podcast, so they do you know, uh, the broadcast, uh, uh, their program in English. So, which is a tremendous help to foreign uh, visitors as well as students. It's a good question. Thank you very much. Other questions, comments? Yes. Julia, thank you. Well, thank you very much, Steve, for that very inspiring presentation about KAIST. Uh, I'm Julia King, I'm Vice Chancellor of Aston University. In, uh, in the UK. And I was wondering, you clearly have some very exciting and innovative approaches to uh, developing entrepreneurship amongst your students. And we have had a number of initiatives in the UK and indeed Lord Young uh, is now looking at how uh, we should further stimulate entrepreneurship and the setting up of new companies amongst our, our graduates and our researchers. And uh, one of the things that he is suggesting is that indeed there ought to be ways of incorporating this into ranking tables and league tables. And so I just wondered, since it's something you're very active in, whether you had any thoughts about whether there were ways uh, in which this could be done. Thank you. In terms of ranking? Yeah, the, the importance of innovation and, and entrepreneurship and how that might feature in the rankings. I know it's going to be a part of the discussion this afternoon, but, but you were So Yes, uh, that will be a good topic to be discussed. Um, we are doing that because KAIST is a really leading institution in Korea. 
Um, so government is looking, people are looking at KAIST to uh, do something for the nation as well as uh, globally. And uh, as you may know that the current government uh, is emphasizing creative economy. Uh, there are not many job opportunities for young graduates. Uh, and one way to help increase uh, job opportunities is uh, through creation of new companies. And uh, even uh, many uh, retired people, you know, these days they retire relatively young age. Uh, in industry, retirement age is 55, and they're still young uh, in today's standards. So they can also start their own business. Uh, so we are doing that. Uh, uh, and uh, what we are also promoting is uh, market has to be global. So we are promoting um, the uh, international competitions, uh, joint competitions. So we have many universities that we are affiliated with. So we are initiating joint competition in uh, business ideas and, and so on. And I do hope uh, that uh, maybe globally we can come up with some kind of a, a promotion of this uh, new spirit of uh, entrepreneurship. And I think it, it is really necessary for the world to uh, get engaged in. And, uh, we haven't done any initiation, but we are sending our students uh, for global competition uh, type of things. I think it's a good call to action for the um, afternoon session around innovation and impact and so on. So I'm sure that a lot of people in the room will be looking forward to that discussion. Other comments and questions? Other hands I can see. Oh. Anything else? Hmm. Yes, okay, still. So, so Phil has a question. Um, Phil Beatty from the Times Higher Education. Um, I'd quite like to hear a bit more from you actually about getting creativity into the classroom. Uh, you and I have spoken privately about that, but you know, in, in the UK we hear a lot about the incredible success of Korean schools and producing mathematicians and technology and science students, but I know you personally have been really keen to try and instill more creativity into the curriculum at, at KAIS, and I'd, I'd quite like mm -hmm. to hear a bit more about that. Thank you, sir. As you know, it's a very, very important issue, uh, also globally, not only in Korea. Uh, but many of you may have heard of this uh, Korean education system. Uh, it's a really hard process uh, for students to go through because they have to prepare uh, many, many exams uh, you know, from kindergarten stage on until uh, university and then in university, similar way. Uh, uh, you know, they do care for what uh, a GPA one has and how well they do in uh, tests. Uh, and that has been the specs for getting jobs and uh, uh, other uh, opportunities in Korea. And now we try to have a significant change in the social uh, metric, uh, even you know, world leading corporations like uh, Samsung, they try to hire more creative people. Why? Uh, they've been running very, very fast to be at the forefront. Now they have to figure out what uh, mm -hmm. products they need to introduce next. And when you try to just catch up, it's easy, you know, just run fast. But when you are at the forefront, it's a bleeding edge. Uh, what you do next uh, requires a tremendous amount of creativity. So they are demanding, actually, uh, leading universities uh, to uh, provide some talents uh, with uh, uh, more creativity. Uh, so this is what uh, KAIST is trying to do. Um, uh, how do we turn our students to be more creative? Uh, I think one factor is the boldness. They need to be optimistic. and. Uh, be bold, uh, not uh, being afraid of failures. Uh, in uh, Korean society, failure has been sort of a uh, dead end. Uh, if uh, one fails, then they s would label that person as a failure. And that person may have a very much a difficulty in uh, advancing their career and uh, finding next job. Uh, we try to change that. Uh, so we say that uh, you know, to succeed, you have to repeat some failures. Uh, in, I personally give an example. Uh, for Edison to invent a battery, he had to fail 20,000 times. Uh, uh, so we, we try to encourage students not to be afraid of a, a failure. Uh, 
and uh, take a challenge. So our core value at KAIS is a challenge and creativity. Uh, so we, we challenge our students. Uh, they used to be uh, in KAIS, if uh, your GPA is uh, below a certain point, uh, they had to pay. In the beginning, they are all coming in as a national uh, scholarship student. So, so they didn't have to pay in the first year. But from second year on, if uh, their GPA, for instance, uh, uh, fell below 3.3, .3, they had to pay. Uh, we tried to remove that. Uh, so I couldn't quite remove it totally, but we lowered the standard significantly to 2.7, and then uh, reduced the amount of uh, tuition they had to pay significantly so that the students uh, be brave and then take more challenging courses instead of worrying about the GPA. And I think by building their uh, knowledge in depth and then uh, be uh, more uh, challenging, they can be more creative, uh, in my opinion. And the start of Kaist effort is on yet another one. We provide a sandbox for them to come try in their idea factory and then uh, come up with some uh, uh, things. So even a short history, now students are producing patterns and uh, we try to propagate that to whole Dejan area. I, I did talk to Mayo and uh, suggested to him that uh, he should set up a similar uh, idea factory in other parts of the city. And uh, as the students go through such exercise and such spirit, I think they will learn uh, how to be more creative. And it's a lot to do with the encouragement also. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, um, I think that brings us to saying thank you very much to you, thank Steve. You. Thank you very much to you. Okay.